Hello. <laughs> That's really loud. <laughs> hello. Hello, everybody. What a delight. Um, tonight, if you just happen to pass by the Great Hall, like those two lovely men there, um, and said, what's going on here? Well, it's probably one of the most interesting ceramic experiences you will ever have, <laughs> because we have Dylan Bowen here. Hello. Hi. Who is an international potter. He's, he's, I'm, I'm his PR person, I'm not really, but um, I actually work here at Dartington. I'm the um, craft and visual arts program manager. Hello, come, come forward. This is reserved here, yes. Um, and as, as the programmer for arts and craft here, it's an absolute privilege for me to invite people like Dylan to come and do an amazing workshop. Who in the room has been on Dylan's workshop for the week? Whoa. <laughs> and can you describe it, anybody? Very messy. Messy, yeah. <laughs> Phenomenal, that's more like it, thank you. See me, see me later, yeah. Um, Dylan, the reason I really felt I really wanted Dylan to come to Dartington and have a week here is that his work is experimental and full of energy and vital. And before I met him, I used to think he was like the Heathcliff of pottery. And then I realized that actually that's really dis giving him a bit of a disservice because he is has got this really beautiful magic about his work and we're going to find out a little bit about him and his kind of journey into ceramics and also the history in his family of ceramics as well so there's going to be a slide a, a slideshow behind me that is rolling that is a kind of examples of his work his history where his pottery comes from where his energy around pottery comes from and also, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank all these people here, the Great Hall. We have restricted numbers at the moment, which is fine. But also, we've got a big crowd online. Hello, online. Hi. Um, so that's I just get my call. water. He's going to get some. I just get in my bucket. Okay. Um, so first of all, um, I'm going to move over here, and we're going to talk about and Dylan. I mean, it's going to be dream. This is like. One of those, you know, those cookery programs where he starts with kind of a little few ingredients and then makes the most amazing piece of work. But he's actually going to make some work live for us tonight. Yes. And he's also going to throw some slip around, which is why we've covered the listed floor. <laughs> the, the walls are listed as well. So just to <clears throat> give you a bit of a warning, Dylan. No, it's just going to be, it'll be okay, here. It'll be okay. And also, we're going to start off by saying, Wow, so what are you going to do and, and what's the kind of... What am I going to do? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I usually start, I'm going to start with making these kind of constructed tube uh, work that I've been making, but I don't usually know uh, exactly where it's going to go until I start making it. Um, and I always think it'll be great to do a quite improvised thing until I start get up here and now I'm thinking I wish I was a bit more organized and <laughs> had maybe thought it through. So what I'm going to do is just start making these, I'm going to make maybe four of these kind of tall shapes and just see where they go. And I'm hoping they'll go somewhere good. And can I just ask you, because we do know a little bit about your history and your father, Clive Bowen, who is uh, also a, an exemplar potter in this country. Yeah. And your grandfather was a potter. And my great grandfather, yes. And, you, and your great grandfather yeah, yeah, yeah. was a potter. There's a theme happening here. Yeah. Um, can you talk a little bit about what it was like to grow up in that world of um, pottery? I, I could. <laughs> I've left them out. I've left them out in the sun a little too long. They've gone a bit dry. So they're going to be a little bit different from what I planned. Um, say that again. Please. So just in your world of growing up, you had a great grandfather was a potter. And yeah. Your grandfather was a potter Oops. and your father 
was Clive Bowen. I mean, yeah. It's quite a big deal. How was it growing up in that world? Um, I, I used to, it wasn't a big deal at the time. It was just what my dad did, really. I don't remember, th I don't remember it being that unusual in that your parents, your parents do what they do and it's fairly it's just what what happens so i grew up in a house full of sort of earthenware and handmade pots and i just assumed everybody else had houses full of pots like that so and they had kilns in their garden and in their shed and so i just thought it was fairly i think i thought it was fairly run of the mill really i don't remember it be, and it, and it was in the sort of mid early mid 70s so it was quite a lot of self sufficiency and lots of uh People used to come and work with my dad, students, and so it's just a lot of people coming through. Um, yeah, I don't remember thinking this is um, special, or not until later, I don't think. And, and when was that, later? Oh, sort of more recently, I think. I, I think about it a bit more now, that I was pretty lucky, you know, to be, to be, um, to sort of grow up in that environment. Look, I've made one. <laughs> I think I thank you <laughs> it's really difficult um, so I'm really like simplicity I think that's what I like making so things like that even though you might look at it and go that's just three things to me that's starting to look quite interesting but I'll make four and then while I'm making them I'll kind of I'll be having an eye on the first one so I might need to adjust them as I go so I'm hoping they're going to take shape. Yes, yeah, so, sorry. So we, we kind of, what you're talking about, what the talk's called embodied energy. And one of the things you and I talked about this afternoon was that when you have an eye, like you have an eye on the first one, some, yeah. some things have energy, don't they, that you feel you want to work on and you want to give them time. Like, I have to say, the work from this class from this week has been amazing. And yeah, it I has. had a look at it and I was kind of going, oh, which one would I choose if, I, if the ship was going down? Yeah, <laughs> I, I think it's been a... And I knew, yeah. I knew instantly. And I think I feel that with you. You have a, a kind of energy about... Uh, I first saw you at the craft show at, at Buffy Tracy. Yeah. The craft fair. And I just thought, wow, there's so much energy in your... I think in the work, yeah. not in me. No, I worked that out. <laughs> <laughs> it all ends up in here. Um, but yeah, we've had a good week actually. We've done, there've been been some really good stuff made. Because um, it's quite. Oh, that's stuck now in there, isn't it? <laughs> um, so explain a little bit more how the energy is in the work and not in you. I don't know if I how can I, can, do can I do that? Yeah. Um, I, I, maybe it's like my alter, like an alter ego or something, that sort of thing. So that, that this is a sort of side of my personality that doesn't maybe come out. Is that what? Well, I think I, I, what I loved about your first evening here was when you talked about when you were a little boy, you really liked battleships. And oh, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and then one of the first plates that you made had a oh, yeah, that might be, and a oh, shark it's not on gonna it. Be Is up that there. gonna come up on the slide? It might do, yeah. So what I liked was that you almost had this little rebellion in you with your dad that said, <laughs> I just like battleships and sharks. And now they're appearing again in your work later in life. Yeah. As if that you that kind of energy of rebellion almost. Yeah, I think that was just a reaction to the sort of time I grew up in, which was quite, um, yeah, like the self-sufficiency and eating lentils and brown rice. And I was really like, oh, come on. And I so I was, I loved things like battleships and sharks when I was a kid and comics and loud things. And yeah, so it might have been, a guess, I guess, a reaction against, you know, I think that's quite normal, isn't it? I think to, it is. I mean, yeah. And also music was quite influential, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. I, th I think I would have um, maybe been like to have been a musician if I had no, no ear for it or no real talent. But 
I, I always thought that's probably what I was going to be when I was younger, rather than a potter, was going to be a musician or a, but without any ability in any, <laughs> so it was like a dream, really. So, yeah. So Dylan, maybe, I mean, you didn't think you had an ear, so do you have an eye for what's aesthetically pleasing in work? I think I must do by now, you know. I think having just made so many things, you just kind of tune in to, but if I stopped to think about it, I couldn't break it, break it down into parts. But if I think I, you could develop an eye just through more like repetition of things. And um, I'm not really sure I'm going anywhere with these, but <laughs> I'm going to keep going. Um, yeah. So I don't tend to think, sort of a lot about what I'm doing. I think a lot of it comes from just doing quite simple things over and over again. And they and as I do that, they change by themselves rather than me trying to figure out what's what the next step is. It's just by sort of process, I guess. I, I get an idea of, of what, what's next. But if I sit and think about something, it doesn't usually, nothing new will come, I don't think. Okay. I've just thought of that. That might not be true. <laughs> it could be true but you tend to also work in the same materials like for years you've used you know you're a red clay boy really, yeah yeah you? yeah very lim limited quite limited um red clay and about th three or four colors of slip and a couple of glazes but that seems to be enough enough for me to sort of explore in um so i quite like that I like that it's rooted in uh, the English or uh, slipwear history. And I like the simplicity. I think that must work for me as a sort of starting point to be able to go where I want to go. But I've got this kind of route, you know, I, th I, I guess that must be something that I, that is important to me. Um, but again, I don't think too much about it. I think that's clear in the... <laughs> I know, but it's clear in like your, the, the work that people probably know, um, I'll just show these actually. Um, the work that people know. Oh, I have to turn, have a look at these from the. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I feel that it's lovely to see you um, kind of diversify. These little characters are so cute. I mean, these are so beautiful. They remind me of um, oh, Nicole. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 There's probably lot. There's lots of things in there. I think that that must be in my head that come out. Yeah. There's a real Dartington resonance as well, isn't there, with your father, with um, the kind of history here? Yes, well, more my great-grandfather came here in the, I think, 30s, wow. um, with an idea of, of setting up a pottery, which I think is still here. We were trying to work out, or the, the shed where he was going to, yeah. is still here. It's still here, yeah. Yeah. So there's a bit, I've never been here, but there's, I feel like there's a, there's a bit of, connection here yeah 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 so that was 1930s when i think so yeah i'm a bit leech was here Bernard yeah leech yeah and michael cardew and i don't know about cardew and but i think a lot of potters came through here didn't they i think yeah my history I mean, let's not go history though <laughs> <laughs> that's not a good route for me um but i, I like it that, that um there is a connection so i must like this kind of connection thing yeah. you know i must do the, these didn't really go exactly where i thought they were going to go but there are but you know i had an idea i was going to make something else but they just turned into these kind of 
like bottle shapes almost. I think I was thinking I was going to, oh, wait, I have more clay. Did I bring more clay? Oh, here, here. I was just going to maybe add a few bits to them. That's what I was going to do. Sorry. It's fine. Like maybe. Now I need tools. What do you need? I um, maybe a knife. That's a knife. So maybe they could go more jug direction, I'm thinking. So I quite like doing things like this to, you know, quite acts of, of violence to things. It's, it's <laughs> And when, uh, well, I had to work with quite soft clay as well. So if I can get away with joining, making and joining at the same time quite quickly, I'm, that's... Oof. So, so far I've got from you that you don't spend a lot of time thinking about things too deeply. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but um, I, one of the things I really like is that you're very gentle and quiet as a, a potter, but your work kind of has a sort of alter ego that is yeah. like quite bold and dramatic and just the way that you're attacking that it's just <laughs> um it's just yeah. really i find that really interesting do you draw at all do yeah you? a bit yeah. yeah a bit but not a lot of, most of it goes into this kind of you know making but if i'm i'll sit and kind of doodle things and try and get ideas going but i don't usually know until i go into the something more three-dimensional, exactly where I'm going to go. So I find it hard to kind of design things or draw things. It doesn't, doesn't really work until I've got hold of the clay. And, but if I haven't got any clay, I'll just do, yeah, try and work out some vague ideas. Or, but I find it's better to get hold of the, the stuff. I'm getting distracted now. I'm just thinking of that one. I'm not sure. And then what's going to happen to that one? And can I just talk about the colours again? Because do you ever get off. the chance to like go and do something like this? So you have like, like with Ian here. Um, Ian is a painter who felt like he'd got a little bit stuck or and he felt like he could do with opening up a bit. Yeah. So he came and did the course with Dylan Bowen I don't know if that's unstuck you um but <laughs> it's probably I, made it made it worse I think that do you ever get a chance to, as a kind of to curate something yourself where you you know you go off and explore something um, where you come back and just want to work in like bright red oh I see um I think that happens a lot you know whenever I go and see an exhibition or something that I mean, I'm thinking how can I but it's more like how can I use that in my work so I don't necessarily go to change materials or change. I just think, what can I get from that that I can steal from myself? <laughs> you know, it's like, what, what's in it for me a little bit? So I don't usually think too much about changing my materials, but right. I try and get ideas from wherever I can, I think. You know, like, I think that's fairly... Um, I think... As I've got a bit a bit older, I'm more sort of relaxed about, I don't necessarily feel the need to try every type of clay or every type of firing. Do I'd like No, I kind of just think this is okay. And if it happens, it'll happen rather than, uh, and if I want to do it, it'll, I'll do it. But there's no real, um, at the moment, I'm happy. I feel like there's enough here for me to keep me keep me happy. And what do you get out of like a week here, like teaching other people? Oh. How does that kind of come back? Yeah, to I've you? got good ideas <laughs> that I'm going to steal. There's been some good things, <laughs> um, and also, yeah, no, I think a lot more than I think. Um, is that people or people ask questions? What? Why do you do? Why are we doing this? Or what? What? What, what does this material do? And and it, so it makes me think. And also, I can go around and see what people are doing. There's been about three or four things I've got. 
that, that you'll be seeing soon. I. <laughs> Wow. And and they'll, and I'll deny every I deny it. <laughs> yeah, so I think I get I probably get more, more really than you know. The, I mean, I get a lot more than I think I'm going to get. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Um, not sure about these, but I really like the um, because you're under pressure. I mean, you. You know, it's quite unusual for you, I suppose, to just to do something in public, but also it's being filmed. Um, yeah, I forgot about it. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> but I think, you know, it's actually quite interesting Ooh. to see you um, create on, in a kind of time limit as well. Yeah. Because your work, I often think your work looks like it's got a, the energy in it is the thing that I'm really attracted to. I mean, I've got a couple of pieces of yours. Yeah. And... um they just ping off the wall because they're, I kind of describe it as electric. Yes. Yeah. It feels like you've just gone, oh my God, I've got like two minutes to get the train. Yeah, okay, yeah. And all of that energy has gone into that mark. Yeah. And Or like here, it feels like you're kind of, you know, somebody's got a gun to your head to finish these. Well, I've got, I, yeah, I feel uh, like I've yeah. got to get going. Well, I feel that, and I think that's why I'm really into... I mean, there's a guy... Um, who's the guy who's the most amazing poster I've got? My friends just bought some of his work. He was a guy... Tim will know him. Um, Paul... Who was the guy in the 70s and 80s? who's the most dynamic electric potter, and he died of AIDS in 1985. No. But his work was just unbelievably powerful because it felt like time was running out. Yeah. And it was so energetic. It was full of vitality. And I think that that's really... I mean, that's the thing I love about clay. It kind of holds your mood, you know. Um, and if you're, if you're bored or tired of something, it really shows in your work. Um, I wasn't looking at you too much. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, I just think there's a, there is that thing, and I think you you cap you capture it very well. Um, yeah, um, I don't think I my work benefits from being dwelled over yeah. too long. Yeah, it doesn't make it better. It might, I mean, it make it's almost like I've got a time limit. Yeah, like you say, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Like a time limit to make it before I ruin it. Yes. Or I overdo it, or I. So I think if I had, yeah, I do. Th yeah, that's, that's quite a good point. Like if I felt like I had unlimited time, I might spend too, yes too long on each thing, or I'd think about it too much, and it would lose whatever the thing it, that I like. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, but it's a really finite thing. Like, you know, we talked about this afternoon. Say you've got those four pieces that you've just done. Yeah. And if you had to, like, squash them, which ones would you, which one would you keep? I don't, I don't think I'd keep any at the moment. <laughs> this one's starting to go a little bit for me. Yeah. Okay. But I feel like I've got quite an odd angle on it. Um, but, but if I make stuff like this, a lot of it I just don't keep, you know, or I'll go and have a coffee and I'll come back and I'll just think that was all, you know, no, nothing good has come from that. <laughs> so, um, but I don't spend my day making things like this. You know, it's not, I make the plates, I do lots of different things. So I feel like I can keep interested. So some stuff is, is uh, you know, like the big plates and that. It's like slightly, I do different things. I suppose that's what I'm trying to say. Like that one's really not, But you're happy. I mean, we, I think we kind of came to an agreement this afternoon. You have to be that person who says that I can't live with that or that or that. You yeah. Know, the, the kind of when you make something, you know, like if you work with kids or I teach a lot of kind of craft stuff. And when people make something, they're actually concentrated for more than 10 minutes and they, they go, look at that, it's brilliant. And you're like, it's not actually, it's, it's like a first attempt and it, yeah. you need to try again. And I'm not, I'm not you know, <laughs> washing their kind, of, um, their kind of intention, but what it is, is 
you you have to kind of keep going back and then eventually when you know you're knitting a scarf you have to knit it again if it's got holes in knit it again and then eventually you'll wear it without looking at that hole you know it's kind of mm. it's it's the kind of honoring craft that I really like you know the fact that you can just and I think you have that with your squashing of things <laughs> yeah um yeah I think that's maybe true yeah see I'm, I'm quite distracted by them now you see I'm losing my I don't think I'm very good at doing I'm like I keep looking at them going well oh, it's not quite <laughs> um like uh, what am I gonna do Got, but, using two parts of your brain yeah it's very <laughs> it seems to be hard for me um but i've got some maybe i'll leave them for now hmm. then we could do some i don't know how long we've got but i've got some stuff to do to decorate yeah great um i think we've got we have got about 15 minutes 20 minutes left so we can okay. just do some decorating yeah i um, think that'd be good good to do and maybe leave the I don't think these are necessarily going going where I want them to go okay. but but I like the I, I I in theory I like the idea of doing something quite improvisational yeah but actually I did I found it quite nerve-wracking doing it. <laughs> <laughs> I have done them before and they all start falling over and collapsing in front of people and I just think oh, it's not a good it's not a good look so in, in this kind of moment where you swap over and, and we look at some of your slipware, is there, do we have any questions on the back? Yeah, that's a good, yeah, that's a good point. I think if I was making them, I'd have them maybe on one of the turntables and I'd be able to turn that round and go, ooh. So I'm kind of constant, you're right, I'm concentrating on one side and I'm also looking at them mainly from here. So I th ideally I'd be going all around them and kind of pacing around them and poking them. But that's a, that's a good point. So from here, they, but from your point, it might look amazing. <laughs> <laughs> you're thinking, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that with the, when you, when the, yeah no, that's a good point but i think if i was working on them at i'll turn them around but um i definitely move around them a lot and and adjust them and um i i just see a kind of picasso jug and um oh with the with the big yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and i think the the kind of sort of you have that kind of raw elegance which raw could be stroke clumsy <laughs> <laughs> um but i really like that it's uh it's instant and it is like it is like a brush mark or a pen mark that you would get if you were you know like picasso's marks were always like bang full of energy i think yeah. there's something really quite cool about them i think there's um, are you gonna Are you gonna slip wear those? Are you no, know? they're 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 too soft. I think they okay. really will fall apart. But I've got some plates, and I've got a group. Actually, I made um, like nine small plates. Okay. So I want to try and maybe do slip those and try and do a li a, a line that kind of links them all together. Okay. So we could try that. Yeah. But maybe. Um, maybe you could move this table back yeah sure a little bit without should we go if we go back there maybe sorry is that all right yeah um so I've, oh. good question that's 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 a good so question. So if you actually. if you did a collaboration with another yeah yeah imagine uh, yeah I do 
Yeah, I'm going to have to... Th yeah. There's probably... There are lots of people that... Um, but a lot of the people I really admire, I also think, I don't know if I'd want to be in the same room as them. You know, they probably like... <laughs> probably not very nice. Um, I have to think about that. I'll, I'll get back to you. Um, so I'm going to do the nine nine plates. I've got to just take this one off here. I don't know. I didn't bring enough boards down. Um, So yeah. that, the question was, when you're working like at this pace, how the, Tim described it as the hammer, which is the thing that destroys the work that's not so good. Yeah. So how do you kind of kind of work with the hammer on when you're working spontaneously? Um, I think working like this is a bit sort of unrealistic, really. But I think I've got better at n not making so many sort of bad decisions, maybe. So um, I can tell more when I'm going in a in the wrong direction. Um, so I'm not saying I don't make bad work, but I'm kind of saying it never happens anymore. It's all <laughs> no, I'm kidding. But um, I think I'm better at recognizing things that I've either done before or I'm like, oh, I'm not going down that road again. So maybe I'm getting more idea of where I want to go. So it doesn't happen as, as often. So I, if I was making these shapes, I'd maybe make, say I made 10 at a time. I now feel, I feel confident that I, I sort of know when they got better. If you see, that's hard to describe, but, and I also wouldn't be afraid to keep adjusting things. Whereas I think before I'd be really, I was a bit more interested in things that happened right in that moment. You know, it had to happen then and otherwise it wouldn't, it wasn't. But now I'm more open to it, basically any way I can get there, it doesn't. So I'd I just, um, so I could come back the next day and maybe take the top off that and put it on that and it would, I think I just, oh, that's really, <laughs> we just put that one there. Yeah, I think I just got more idea of what's what's going to work, I think. But I still, obviously, I still make quite a lot of quite things that don't quite make it. Um, but yeah, not as many. Not as many as I used to. Right. So I'm just going to get these plates out. I can try and do them here, I think. Um, so these are another thing I make a lot of these really simple plates um, and they're just made out of sli slices of clay so I'm going to put them on here like so actually I need to put white slip on them first is it here? No. Is it's it here? not. No, it's back at the. Oh, I didn't bring the slip. Okay. We have a change of plan. That's quite a big change of plan. <laughs> um, did I, I, I not. Did I not bring the bucket of white slip? Yeah, that's the water bucket. Yeah, can you, do you know the one, the one, is it outside? You might need the key. Yes. <laughs> okay, thank you. I hope it's there. I saw I thought maybe it might be outside the, the, the door, but thank you. So we're not going to go white, we go black on these then, but that's fine. Um, so I'm just going to brush black slip onto these plates. Uh, so what is black slip? Um, well, slip is clay. So this is um, 
red clay with iron and manganese. It's not very, it's not exactly black. It's more, at the moment it looks quite red, but when it's fired, it, it'll be like, it'll be like this kind of black, this black or very dark, very dark brown. <clears throat> so my plan here is to, is to link all these plates together. Do you make your own slips and things like yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, but they're really simple. Um, so the white slip is just is white clay. And I have a green that's the white clay with a little bit of copper. Um, and I think that's all I have. Green. And, and then I use... Uh, two glazes, a clear glaze and a glaze with a bit of ironing that gives it that, that gives it that sort of yellow honey color. Yeah, it's lovely, that color, yeah. that honey. And that's all really. Um, and I've tried, I've sort of tried using uh, different color slips now and again, but I, I think I must like the, these, this limited palette as well. And they, they are very much like the old old slipwear similar yeah um i just move them a bit closer together so when you grew up with your dad because he was he worked with slipwear didn't he yeah yeah like, did you kind of was it something you kind of it's like baking you know you get to know how your grandma makes a cake and things like that you did you have that same kind of experiment with um your, with your dad, did he kind of involve you in it? Um, did he? Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. But um, his work was a lot more functional. Mm. So I used to, when I was younger, I, I would make, I'd go in, I'd make little creatures and things. But then I think for a while I was trying to make more functional work. Um, and it just wasn't quite my, it wasn't quite me. I really brought nothing. <laughs> wow. <laughs> what about the... <laughs> oh, here it is. Jesus. I'm starting to... Also, <laughs> I wanted to ask you around the kind of... We, we often talk about um, Leech's... Leech got into that whole kind of Buddhist idea around understanding the, the spirit of the material. Yes. And also the spirit of you. So, you know, you can think you're going to throw a pot in a certain way but the actual material has a different idea. Okay. But also, do you feel that, because I could spot your work today from a mile off. Yeah. In, you know, in the class, I was like, oh, that's Dylan's work. Yeah. But it's because it has your spirit in the, in the kind of everything of it. I mean, do you, are, you, are you aware of that? Is it something no. that interests you? No, no, I don't <laughs> think so. <laughs> I feel like that, that's... Um, that's just not the way my, I think. I don't I, think. I know. I kind of know the answers. Yeah. <laughs> if I think at all, but it, um, I mean, I do think, but I don't. I seem to approach thinking about the work quite indirectly. I think, in a kind of roundabout way. Yeah. So nothing's very specific. Um. So what? So if I mean, if now I'm thinking. I'm thinking, where's my line going to go? And I don't think there's anything more profound going on in here. I'm just <laughs> thinking, if I do that, I'm going to come out. Um, so I guess, it, I guess it's sort of like quite in the moment now. Um, I might just have to have a little practice on. Do you want to press on this? I can just do it on that board, actually, okay. that wooden board there. Just make sure I'm in the... I've got a good trailer. Yeah, that's good. Feels a bit runny. This is the, the... One of the features of the week is having slip that's either too runny or too thick or not quite right. So <laughs> by tomorrow, we're going to have the perfect... 
And you're using like just a, a pipette there, are you? Yeah, these are mainly what I use, slip trailers. So I'm just going to get, get going. Okay. That's about it, really. <laughs> that's the that's it. And then I think actually I, I meant to go round, you know, like follow the line round, but for some reason I went up and then I went back. But that'll be okay. It's, it's really it's really nice because it's you're under pressure as well. So you're not in your own environment. Yeah. And so no, that's worked that's worked out fine. It's worked out really well. Yeah. I think I know the one I'd like. You have to have them all. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> they're all. The, they're all. Um, so I've got a couple more to do. I think when I, I should explain how we we met at Bobby Tracy, and you'd done a a kind of ex, an, um, sort of experiment like this, but lots of big plates, mm. and done lots of slip, and then it poured with rain, and they were all outside, and I was like, oh, that's so. so actually, that's really beautiful. And Dylan said, just, just have it. It's fine. Just take it. And I, I was like, how am I going to get that home? And then I got a pizza. I went and got a pizza, you know, box. Oh, that's right. I remember and, that's um, right. So I got the pizza box and I put the plate in it. And then we were all leaving because I've been doing a stand. And I left it next to the car. And it got, like, slightly run over because somebody just thought it was trash. So the edge of the, <laughs> the edge of the thing, so I had to kind of pack it up again. And then I got home and thought, what? I, I rang my friend who's got a big kiln and she said, let's just fire it and see what happens. And then I do a clear glaze on it. She was really into the fact that it was Dylan Bowen's plate that I got from the rain. She's like, bloody hell. And um, so we fired it. And then she said, I'm going to glaze it, clear glaze it. It's come out really well. And, and then she came around to my house with it. And I opened the front door and she was like in tears and said, and it was the Brexit result day. And she said, the plate has broken 48%, 52% in half. <laughs> and it became the Brexit plate uh. that nobody dared talk about. And then I <laughs> wabby sabbed it together with some gold glue. And it's, um, it's an absolute travesty. <laughs> it's a mess. But the fact that people say, oh, it's the Brexit. Oh, that's that Brexit plate. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look, fab. Oh, so that with... was a filler, by the way, while you got yourself sorted yeah, out. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Hey, that's the one. That's the one. Oh, brilliant. Oh, crikey. Yeah. Thank you very much. I basically left everything. <laughs> okay, we can, do, we can do white now. Thank you. Um, so this is the white slip here, and it's it's not too bad. It's quite sort of yeah, that's pretty good. It's like single cream, isn't it? Yeah, I'm going to move that. Or I'm going to knock that over. So I want to pour slip on. I suddenly feel like I don't want to lift these at all now. They're quite heavy. I made them really thickly. I think normally I'd make these on the wheel, but I didn't, didn't have a wheel. So I've made them like large versions. Do you want me to help you? Actually, maybe um, I could get, I was going to ask Ian if you want it, Ian, do you mind? How, um, if you hold it, can I pour it? Maybe we can pour it into that. Sorry, I don't want to get it all over your... Your lovely. It's very wise, actually. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm just gonna. If we, if I do half and half, is that making sense? So if I go sort of here, give it a shake. <laughs> Thanks. Fab. Oh, it's like the master, the master at work. Sorry. Oh, there we go. That's brilliant. Okay. That is fantastic. Should we just do another one while you're, while you're there? 
<laughs> also with the slip, it um, at the moment it's super wet. So it's so if I was to make my marks, it'd be really splashy. So I like to let them sit for like a couple of minutes. Otherwise, it's it's almost too much. The longer you let them sit, the more it soaks into the clay. So the marks have become different. Now we've got a bit of a problem. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> It's basically a floppy bit of clay. Um, wait, we ready? <laughs> so I really, I really dropped you in it. <laughs> he's doing, he's doing well. <laughs> Sorry, man. I didn't realise it was such a. There we go. We're just going to do that. That's brilliant. Try to take that. Thanks. Thanks. I haven't got one. You see, I put those on it. Put it on here, look. I put it on there, yeah. Thanks, Ian. That was an expert. He was, actually. Yeah. Um, so this one I'm going to decorate now. Oh. I cut. It's so heavy. I'll just put it there. Um, so I'm just going to think about what sort of mark I'm going to make. Um, I think I'll go black on the on the white. It's still really wet. So if I do anything, it's going to be like a big. That might be okay. Yeah, yeah. Maybe um, just pull it a wee bit back from the, oh, from the, from yeah. the listed floor. Yeah. yeah, okay. That's a good point. Yeah. What I really like here is, I don't know, Patrick, if you can pick that up, all your handprints are there and all your kind of whatever that is. It's, yeah. it's very rough and it just adds to that. You know, yeah, I think it fits with the... Yeah, if With it was slip. if it was super precise, it would look really weird, wouldn't it? You know, if, it the, actual, if the base was really clean. Mm. Um, I'm just going to think about what sort of mark to make. See, this is quite runny actually, so this might go. This might be quite splashy. I think I want to try and get a bigger mark. So I'm just going to take the, so it's going to be half tray or half pour, I think. Oh, <laughs> I just have to do it. Okay. Yes. Trouble is there's no going back now. <laughs> cool. That's okay. <laughs> um, I felt a little bit hesitant actually, because I wasn't sure what was going to, that's okay though. Yeah. Uh, it looks no, it looks better. It looks better down here. Um, but the thing is that I don't really like to clean them off. I mean you can probably clean them off and have another go, but I quite like that like to just do it and that, that's that's what happens. Um, it's cool. I like it. Do you want to hand with this one down there? Yeah. You, no, I'll, I'll get it. It's okay. I was just thinking about what I'm going to do on that. I think I'll do the this one here. Um, but this one, I'll go. I'll go with the with the black slip on it. I think. <clears throat> I'm going to knock something over in any minute. So I'm just going to, use, I can paint, I sort of paint the black on because it's very strong. So I can get quite good, covers it pretty well. Um, I'll do it. 
And I've got this, I want to just try this trailer here, which is a three, I think it's a catering for sauce. And it does make a really nice, I'll have a practice on here. Just have a little. Um, usually they don't work if I don't have an idea of the sort of mark I'm going to make. And at the moment, I don't really have an idea. So I'm just going to, yeah. I think I'll have to try and do another loop maybe. Mm, nice. Okay. It might, it might work out. I quite like that one now. Mm. I I'm not, not so happy with that one now. That's sort of nagging, nagging me a bit. But Why is that nagging? I don't know. I just something about it. So I do do quite a lot of this. Like I do it and then I just stare at it for a, a half an hour going. Oh. Mm -hmm. or, or, or the one I don't really like really sort of bugs me. And I kind of just keep looking at it. Going, I'm almost tempted to. I'm going to get rid of it. It's, I'm going to get rid of that one and do it again, but with the, <clears throat> with the black. Because it's, it's, it's upset. It's sort of upsetting me there <laughs> with, with its shininess. <laughs> Um, so I can probably, I can usually get away maybe with, I mean, I can probably wipe that off once, I think, but it, it, it doesn't really do any good to be cleaned off, but, um, I think in the name of a bit more decorating, I could probably do this. Obviously I never do this at home. Everything. Um, Right. So I think I'll try doing the same mark, but maybe with the, with this on the, onto the black. It's in there. Is it's it? in there, yeah. Ah. Oh. <laughs> okay. I keep an eye on the, on the floor. That brush is gorgeous. What yeah. Is, what's the brush? It's just a, a Chinese brush, it just it sort of carries a lot of slip. Yeah. Yeah, it's very nice, very nice to use. Okay. That'll be okay. So I might try and do something similar, but with it, with the, with the white here. And I'm going to do, this is going to be good. Okay. I feel like I should just try a bit. Now let's just do it and see, see how it goes. Mm, nice. Yeah, that's better. See, I like that one straight away. <laughs> Something about, I think it's about the shape of the loop. I've got like quite a specific idea of what I want when it, when it kind of does that sweep. And that one must have been the one before. And I like the width of it as well. Mm, I do. Yeah. They look great up there. Look, the two of them together look Yeah, great. yeah. Yeah, so that was good. So I'm happy with that one. Yeah, I've got another one. You have got that one. Yeah, that's quite interesting. With the, are you going to go for black on that? I think so. Yeah, that's the only two things I can do though. So I've, that's it. That's my repertoire. It's doing a loop. I could do a line. Mm -hmm. I do a line. This is the one without a bat. Oh yeah. Uh, do you want to shift? I could go on this one, yeah. I think. Okay. 
<clears throat> you sure? You mind you. Thank you. Let's go on there. That's good. Um. I need the top of that, maybe. Oh, here it is. I've got it, I've got it, thank you. So I've got an idea what I'm gonna do with this one. But I'll start doing it and it, it might change as I, oh, it's really splashy. Yeah, okay. Uh, maybe a little bit, it's a sort of, um, there's quite a lot going on now with all this kind of, but I think that was putting really thick white slip on quite a, wet, it's very wet piece both. of clay yeah. so everything's wet so it when the clay's drier the slip soaks in a bit and i would get a completely different line yeah. that's okay i think that's going to be all right yeah i'm a i'm a slip junkie so i could watch you doing this all night i think that was okay i think there's something really lovely about a few minutes ago i just kind of lost I was like that whoa in this world because you don't see a maker often particularly at the great hall just being absorbed in their practice and yet for like 100 years now people ceramicists have come here and talked about pottery and how important it is to them and they've stood in this hall and given amazing talks about pottery and um I just feel it's lovely to have you here and I don't really you don't need to say anything but I like I like the chat yeah and I kind of feel like it's re a real privilege to have you here Dylan so thank you very much oh, thank and, you um it's been great we just have a big thank you for Dylan thank you thanks for coming so can I just are there any questions you'd like to ask him because yeah over there I, sorry, I can't. Yeah. Yeah. Not these ones. No, no. Dylan, can you repeat what she just asked? Um, when, when they're leather hard, do I do any turning? No, I don't. Um, no, I don't do anything. To you know, when I make them and then I just because I mean they're just like really thick lumps of clay. They're not. Yeah, I don't know what I would do. No. I think it's the, um, if I was make, trying to make something, you know, uh, I do turn other things like maybe bowls and things, but um, no, nothing. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, haven't, I haven't thought of your question. I just, <laughs> tomorrow it will come to me. Oh, I see. Because uh, when he, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I, and yeah. So if, if you mean, because when you say turning, I, I thought I think I think of turning a foot on a bowl or mm. something like that. But I do turn them and make this edge. So I, I suppose it, in my mind, I was thinking, do I make a nice foot? I don't do that, but I do make these edges with my thumb. So I kind of do a bit to them. Yes, that's good. Anybody else questions? 
Wow. Well, I just want to say thank you so much. It's been an absolute thrill. One, to have you here this week. It's been a... Through, co through, through the last 40 months, I think we've rearranged this date about three times for you to come. Yeah. And I just think it's brilliant. I'm really grateful for all the people on the course for sticking yes. with it and rebooking every time. Um, I would do, because I, you know, I really liked Dylan and his work. So um, and we're hoping he's going to come back as well. So yeah, yeah. yeah. So Thank yeah, you. just a massive whoop whoop, please, for Dylan Bowen. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Ha, ha, ha.